here we are for round two of blue white technically also splash red familiars and yeah let's keep familiar turn two hopefully turn three analysis should kick things off quite nicely Green elves. Okay. Okay, so could be tough still. Depending on, of course, how broken their hand is. If it's just a vanguard, that is fine with me. Much more threatening would be like Titania or Timberwatch. And of course Titania only if they have the distant melody or the, the stampede follow up. But if it's just a vanguard for now, I'm just gonna go for the maximum card draw line set myself in the best spot possible for the following turns can always uh, do some faithful slater but it looks like they won't even be able to block the vanguard uh, maybe they will or they would rather as it seems they only have a 3-3 three, three. Okay, so anyway, I feel like at, at this spot uh, we do want to play the Fateful. We might want to play both Fatefuls. So let's see, if we snap, question is also whether we should be snapping the Vanguard or the Huntmaster. If we snap the Huntmaster, it basically means they have to spend their whole next turn replaying it and they'll be attacking with a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, if we snap the Vanguard, then they can replay Vanguard and kind of start going wide. So I think snapping the Huntmaster is like the safer line. could also snap both obviously, but uh, do we need to do that is the question? Well, maybe now when we drew the second fam, it kind of incentivizes me to do something extra this turn. Yeah, I mean, given the state of events, I feel like this play makes sense. Because now we can fam plus Seagate into Preordain. Okay, no need for the third fam, but Nimonic Fall is a nice draw, and now if we get. Let's see. So I actually don't think we need the analysis. We could still keep it. I guess it's better than flickering Seagate and uh, right and top top. Yeah, so it was a pretty strong turn four. Deployed pretty much all our hand while setting the opponent one or potentially more turns back. Okay, Titania is a little annoying. Uh, I feel like we could actually just bounce the Titania next turn. Mm, 
yeah, because that delays their plan quite a bit and it gives us mana back, so yeah, let's do it. some cards and basically just searching for the win con. Oh, here it is. Uh, might as well win on the spot then. Yeah, turn 5 win. That's also pretty fast. It's like this deck can uh, technically produce a turn 4 win. Turn 4 is I think the earliest we can do. But even turn 5 is like way above what we usually go for. But keep in mind, this combo deck is actually not about speed, but more about the durability and inevitability. Alright, so against elves, definitely want the full stone horn package. And I usually want to bring in the disenchant against uh, Viridian Longbow as that card can just even though you lock up the game with Dignitary you die to the Longbow same reason for keeping in Negate and it also counters Stampede and Distant Melody we can cut uh, like two analyses and uh, from the draw we could cut a Mountain what else? Yeah, I feel like cutting a mountain is okay. And there's even a thought for like cutting a faithful because a little bit of flying ga life gain from faithful is usually not a game winning line against Elvis. And even if you can set like infinite life gain loop, uh, it's not good enough for to win on magic online because they can produce absurd amounts of damage so if you actually wanna win with infinite life you would just time yourself out anyway this hand lacks blue mana obviously i think we wanna go for better uh, this hand has all the mana it needs but the cards are really awkward but I feel like it's gonna be better than the average 5. But yeah, definitely suboptimal. Alright, so they do have the max mana ramp. I guess technically not, because max mana ramp would be Titania. But still, yeah, pretty good. 5 Elvis on turn 2, but uh, all of them are dorks. Wow, they are on mono dorks. Alright. Funny thing is, we might just die to the beats still. Yeah, because no turn to play, then three we can denizen. And that's gonna start unblocking, but uh, so far the clocks doesn't work in our favor. 
still think we start with the denizen because he can actually eat one of the dorks. Okay, there we go, with a major trend. Oh, even though, I guess since they are empty-handed, it's not even that big of a deal, this guy. Uh, what do we block? I guess the search lore. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, did not draw all too well. So if they're attacking next turn, we're blocking here and uh, we may be like ch uh, jumping with the fam and then flickering. It's pretty awful play, <laughs> but uh, we might be needed to do that, yeah, because Yeah, let's see. If we do just this, then we are taking 7 damage. Yeah, I feel like I want to do this and then flicker here. And then also land cycle to thin a bit. And uh, huh, do we just lose? We have three blockers, they have five attackers. Yeah, we just lose. Wow. That is not how these games usually play out, but happens, definitely can happen. All right, so on the play, I am uh, more inclined to want the extra land. And uh, what do we cut? I don't like cutting more card draw, so yeah, we cut could cut the Fateful, as I was suggesting earlier, or we could just cut the Disenchant, because I mean, some of the versions now don't even run the Longbow. So yeah, I mean, since we are, we could also cut the Sage Row, I mean, that is another line we could go for, because we have a lot of time on our clock. So we can probably win with Maldrifters or whatever. Yeah, let's actually do that. Because, I mean, the Sage Row is kind of the worst card in the deck, so... I don't mind leaving it out if I can leave it out. Alright, Hand has all the mana in the board, but... Uh, no action. Uh, we might still want to keep it. Like, any card draw spell really sets us off. But yeah, it's definitely borderline. Oh yeah, that is it. That is what we needed, exactly. Especially in the combination with Fam, Bounce Land, Snap. This is really good. So, what you got, opponent? Titania. Okay, I do not love seeing that, obviously. So, question is, do we need to snap the Titania? I mean, if we go for a bounce land, snap, then we have... Uh, we could bounce land into snap into a hardcast Maldrifter. 
If we wait a turn and just play a bounce land here, we can then next turn go with Maldrifter Evoke, snap it, you know, get the aggressive kind of card draw going. But uh, since it's elves, I have a lot of respect for elves, so I actually think let's just uh, play it safe and bounce the Titania so that they cannot go full on crazy next turn. And yeah, hopefully we get some action, which we did. And that should kind of set us off to the races. Okay, if opponent's just playing Huntmaster, maybe a dork. That's fine with me. Next turn I'm probably playing the wall so that I have a blocker for the Huntmaster. Uh, I don't think I need to leave up Negate. Yeah, I'm just not spending the time on uh, potentially blowing the opponent out with Negate. Now they don't really have good attacks, so they just replay the Titania and I guess let's see what the follow-up is. If they do have Stampede or Melody, I guess we will uh, we will regret not having the Negate up. Okay, there is the Stampede. Yeah, I mean, we could have gone for a different line next turn, but... Whatever, uh, there's no reason to complain about past decisions. Anyway, it seems like and they didn't draw into any of the really important elves. I mean, they are going pretty wide for now, but... Uh, most notably they don't have the timber watch oh wow and we have second wall so if we draw a bounce land and a flicker we are in tremendous shape anyway i feel like we can start with a simple evoke okay let's snap it We do have the bounce land, we do not have the flicker though. So uh, how do we do this exactly? I don't think I need to bounce any of their Elvis right away. Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Sure then, so Let's just Fateful to start gaining life and prevent their go wide strategy. And I believe probably just hard cast another wall. Because that gives us snap back for next turn more Maldrifter shenanigans. Leaving the Maldrifter on defense so that their Dorky attacks aren't that viable. And I mean, technically we have to win uh, eventually, somehow. So, uh... We will need to start attacking, maybe. 
but we've got time for that. Wow, they do have the melody. Okay. Uh, this complicate things probably means that we do have to find the stone horn. And I guess if they did draw into if they did draw into a very damn long bowl, we are probably over if they sequence it properly. Because with so much mana they can just nuke our team. And yeah. Yeah, there's the timber watch. I mean, we could still snap it, so we could maybe survive one turn if they have just a single timber watch. Okay, um, never mind, I guess. Yeah, so let the host player do what they do best. I mean, on the flip side, we do have a win condition now, like even though they can probably start gaining infinite life, we do have the win condition of uh, them decking first. But uh, this is only provided we this is only provided they don't just kill us this turn with longbow. If they have it, if they have access to it. And provided we stabilize next turn with Stonehorn. might as well get some blocks off even though it's not super relevant even okay so how do we sequence this i think we can start off with preordain sure for these. All right, now, hmm. question is whether I should be playing the Chancery. And I think answer is yes, because we will need white mana for the stone horn. It's, it's a book here. Okay, there he is. Save our Maldrifter, because why not? And uh, yeah, we'll definitely play the Stone Horn. Uh, question is, do we want to like snap it now? Replay it? Do we want to? Hold up negate. I would love to hold up negate, but huh? Can we do that? Like realistically? I think we probably can. Yeah. So if we snap this guy and we preordain now, or maybe better evoke the Maldrifter. Drifter. 
Yeah, and we can just hold up negate now. And I mean, we still don't have the flicker to have the win. But uh, I imagine we have to find it. And we have a little bit of time with double stone horn. But yeah, this will be a little bit boring, maybe because even if we stabilize, we still have to go through 30 turns. <laughs> okay, so anyway, start off with the Prio. And there's the flicker. Excellent. Yeah, so I feel now the opponent has literally no outs because uh, we can flicker and uh, I guess technically if they are playing like, uh, what's it called, Vines of Westwood, I want to flicker the walls first to get a snap back. Yeah, I don't think they are playing vines, but uh, might as well play around the possible outs. Yeah, so now basically the only thing we have to worry about is uh, to remember flickering the stone horn. Uh, note that uh, the stonehorn triggers stack up so you can like pile it up you know so so far we are fading through this combat step and the next one So that's two more combat steps. Three. Four. And we do have to get to 30. I'm just doing this there end step so that I can leave up as many negates as I want because I can remember I can uh, rebuy the negate by flickering walls so even if they have like double long bow or whatever 
It doesn't matter. Okay, so four. I think I'd be miscounting, but whatever. Five combat steps. Not cracking the wilds, by the way, I don't wanna thin. Okay, so it's, I think, like nine combat steps. Ten. wanted to <laughs> didn't want to flicker the walls whatever okay, so 11 the 12. Know that we can also speed it up a little bit with deep analysis. So but yeah the main concern in these kind of games is the clock. I'm maybe playing uh, kind of slow as I'm narrating a lot but uh, you can definitely only opt for these kind of endings if you are confident enough in the deck and if you have enough clock for the last match remaining. Okay, so I think 13, 14, 15, Leaving a little bit of blue up just in case they have something. I don't know. I don't even know what could they have, but uh, I suppose some. I know they have those spells that deal damage equal to uh, the number of creatures you have, but they are usually sorcery I believe but just in case there is some instant one I'm forgetting uh, might as well leave the negate up at all times So seventeen. Eighteen. 
18. I'm just not bothering with the card draw. It's not like there's a card uh, I would need. I guess technically if they have like Ferhima cover it would be nice having a second flicker. But I don't think they run that and even if they do it's not gonna matter really. So this is 24 I believe. Something like 27 or whatnot. And we still have all three D penalties left in our deck. Or two, I guess two, two analyses. So eventually when we draw into them, we can speed things up a little bit. Note that we cannot win, uh, we cannot like mill them infinitely with the analyses though, because uh, we still can't make infinite mana with this version of the deck. Okay, so this is like 28, 29. And 30, maybe a little bit more or less. I don't have the exact count, so maybe let's do like one more just to be super safe. Okay, and from now on we can just pass to anything but really long bow. I guess we would counter a relic as well. Not that it matters much, but yeah. Oh, I should have... Oh, damn. I should have taken the analysis, obviously. There we go. Alright, so I'm gonna fade through like 10 more turns and then I'm gonna finish things off with the analysis. Actually, I think blue mana is the constraint, right? So we have uh, four, five, six, seven blue, so... Yeah, there's a limit to how many times we can 
penalized per one, per one turn and I don't want to let them untap with uh, with the extra cards from analysis even though they most likely won't matter anyway but whatever I mean, their army is quite impressive, but won't be good enough. And yeah, just to speed things up, I'm gonna also uh, remove my uh, second main phase stop. Right, and I feel like the time has come to pull the trigger on the win. snap gives us some mana so let's use it as well We are snapping, just doing it for the extra mana.
And there we go. All right, I apologize for the probably not so exciting ending to the match, but uh, that is how games with familiars sometimes look like. At least it's uh, quite different from what you see from most of the other decks on the format. So there's that. Thank you for watching and see you in the next match.